G'day lads, it is All Things Geelong here coming at you with a brand new video where if you have read the title you can kind of guess what this video is going to be about. I'm going to be talking about five coaches, five that I think are under the pump. Before we start the video I just want to throw out like a few disclaimers here and there. Um, when I say these coaches are like under the pump I'm not necessarily saying that they are going to lose their job uh, by the end of the season, uh, halfway through the season, by the end of round one. But what I am saying that is they have a certain level of expectation to perform and achieve. Um, and if they are slightly missing the mark, uh, their role will be under scrutiny. And if they miss it completely, then they will probably, uh, probably end up losing their job. So a good example I can think of, let's, let's say Geelong randomly right so obviously we were a team coming off our premiership year you can't really tick any more boxes than that in terms of our satisfaction from a club standpoint um you know if we were to go into 2023 um missing out on the finals um i don't think the the department at the geelong uh, cats football club would be looking to sack uh chris scott um, even if we were to finish bottom four somehow, obviously that'd be a very devastating and shocking year. Um, but I don't think Chris Scott would lose his job just yet. You know, I think it would have to be a one or two more added years of like bottom four finishes where it's like, okay, maybe Scott's not the man anymore. That would be like an example um, of like how badly a season would have to go for someone to lose their job. So when I'm talking about these coaches, these coaches are the types of coaches that are either going into a team that is looking to push the next level up um, in terms of what they can offer to the club in terms of their internal success and then their success on a broader scale or they're going into a team that has uh, had pretty decent success and they kind of want to maintain that maybe start getting on a bit of a roll and if they were to make any sort of backwards progression that would be quite concerning for the club as a whole so the first uh, coach i want to talk about um i think this one is no surprise okay this is fine So the first coach that I want to talk about, which I don't think comes to as uh, any surprise here from anyone, uh, or shouldn't be at least, uh, I think is uh, Ken Hinckley uh, from Port Adelaide. So Mr. King, uh, yeah, bleh, bleh. so Mr. Hinckley um, coached his side uh, to an eventful 10 and 12 finish, uh, finishing 11th on the ladder in the 2022 season. They did start the season 0 and 5, and from there actually managed to win uh, 10 of the next 17 matches. So that was actually a pretty decent effort overall. And if they had actually started the season 10 and 7, and instead of losing those five on the trot, maybe they win two or three of them, they're probably looking at finals. Uh, so you know, a poor season probably ruined uh, their season in a whole. Like that first month and a bit kind of really ruined it for the Port Adelaide Football Club. But I think Ken Hinckley is definitely the first coach you'd probably look at as someone that's got a little bit on the line for them at the moment. I think Port Adelaide have to be making finals. Um, I've predicted it in my uh, previous video. If you did not watch that video, make sure you uh, give it a quick little squeeze uh, just to see where I actually put the the power in terms of the um the overall season ladder but you know spoilers uh they do make the finals in my prediction um because i feel like you know they have the talent they have the list they have some really good young guns they have some decent vets um and i think ken is a pretty decent coach like you know i think he has all the tools there to set up a successful club he just needs to now execute if this Port Adelaide Football Club were to not necessarily just miss the finals, but to miss it terribly, like to finish uh, even worse than how they finished last year, so say they slip down to like a 13th, 14th finish where they're just trying to avoid the bottom four, I think Ken Hinckley might be out the door by the end of the 23 season. So uh, I think he's definitely one where he probably realizes his job is on the line going into this year and he probably needs to make sure that 
uh, him and his boys really start whipping something together quick or else it's going to be panic sides for the head man at Port Adelaide. Now the second coach, this one's a bit more of a curveball. Um, I'm not really sure exactly how to phrase this one like i don't think they're necessarily under the pump as much as maybe ken hingley is but they are definitely someone that will have a lot of eyes on them and a lot of expectation to help them perform um and that's going to be brad scott from the Essendon football club and let me explain i know he did only just get appointed this year going into the 2023 season um and he is a coach that has had uh some great success uh, when he was with that North Melbourne side in the early to mid 2010s, uh, I infamously think about the 2014 season where he took that North Melbourne uh, football club to a prelim. And, you know, he's had like just general success um, as a player as well as a coach. You know, he's kind of shown that he has the capabilities to lead a club uh, to success on the field. But, you know, Essendon is one of those teams where realistically they have some of the better talent going around the club you think about like some of the players that the Essendon football club have you know they have their sam drapers their pa darcy parishes uh langford uh zach Merritt. He, he's a good player as well you know dylan shield uh andrew mcgrath you know archie perkins uh, dyson heppel you know, still very good on his day. They have they have some pretty decent talent in there? Obviously, uh, McDonald, Tip, and Woody is coming back for the twenty three season. But yeah, they they have a list that should be good enough to compete, uh, or at least get to the finals. So the fact that you know, looking at last year, they were uh, on the top end of the bottom four. Um, if they were to kind of stagnate at the same level or dip lower. Uh, the board might end up trying to pull uh, Brad Scott into a meeting at the end of the 23 season and say, hey, look, are you sure you're the guy for this job? Because we don't really want to be repeating uh, bottom four finishes. So, you know, going into the season, I think uh, the Essendon board... Now, I know there's been like a few changes uh, from a staff level perspective at the Essendon Football Club, but... Regardless of that, you know, they would know the list that they have. They know the talent that they have. Uh, they know the culture that they're probably trying to build at the football club. Um, they know that they should be good enough to, you know, maybe not even necessarily make finals per se, but to at least contend, like, you know, by round 10, 11, 12, to be that team that, you know, is in the conversation at least. Um, if they finish bottom four again, I think there's going to be some serious doubts about whether Brad is the man for the job and they might be looking for a new coach going into 24. Um, only time will tell, but he's definitely one of the coaches that will be under the microscope, uh, at least for the immediate future. Now, for my third uh, coach that I have uh, on this list. Now, this coach uh, did see success uh, in the last few years, actually. Um, and is now coaching a team that has been struggling for the best part of about the last two years, you know, and they just, no one really uh, thinks they can really climb up the ladder too much, if at all. Um, but to be honest, if they probably don't make successful stride to move up the ladder going into the 23 season, uh, this man may be potentially out of a job. And that's Adam Simpson from the West Coast Eagles. Now, why do I have Adam Simpson as someone that I think is under the pump? So, like I said, they are a team that has seen success. So, infamously, you think about the 2018 uh, home and away season where West Coast were a team that looked very strong, but no one really rated them to be the premiership favorites um, really at any point in the season. I think there was maybe only a couple of times where they were talked about as genuine flag contenders. And they went on to win the whole thing in the 2018 season. They, you know, they were the team that, when it mattered the most, they were the most hungry. They got the job done. They had some great, fantastic players. And to be honest, going into like the 19 and 20 and even 21 seasons, uh, they basically had the same lineup. Um, you know, obviously they added Tim Kelly not long after that as well, who was as we know as Cats fans, was fantastic for us at the Geelong Football Club. And they just haven't really replicated the same success since. Um, you know, they've been on the bottom four of the ladder for what feels like a while now. 
Uh, even looking, you know, last year they finished 17th with two measly wins. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about a team that had the same amount of wins as a bunch of kids at North Melbourne, which is not really good enough when you consider how much experience and how many veterans are actually on that team. Like, I look at a West Coast similar to us, where they're a team that has a lot of aging talent, but the talent is still there. But for some reason, they just couldn't get it to work on game day. And I don't know what it was. I don't know if they all, like, had some bad juice one day or if they just woke up on the wrong side of the bed or if they just, you know, uh, freaking, you know... <laughs> turned down the wrong street and it just mucked up their whole year or something but west coast were bad when you consider like their list and how good their list actually is you know you've got like your nick nats uh you know you've got your uh kennedys um you know obviously you've got uh as i mentioned before tim kelly um you know they got some pretty decent players but they just they couldn't get it to work so I don't know what they're going to have to do. I mean, I think West Coast can only go up here, right? Like two wins, it's not that hard to improve at all, right? So I think if West Coast stagnate at that like bottom two finish and don't make any like signs of progress moving forward, I think Adam Simpson might be out of a job at the end of the 23 season. Um, or he's definitely going to be at least scrutinized to the point where 24 would have to be his last roll of dice to make something happen. Like, I know going into this season, you know, the West Coast uh, Football Club department is probably not expecting West Coast to just make the finals. Obviously, look, every single AFL team, I just want to make this as a disclaimer, by the way, every single AFL team wants to see their team make the finals, right? That's obvious. No one wants to invest millions of dollars per year to watch their football club win two three games for the year like that's that's i don't i don't care who you are like you're kidding yourself everyone wants to see their team make the finals right but if west coast don't make any sort of progress like if they don't try to at least avoid the bottom four going into the 23 season um i think adam simpson might only then have one or two years left at his head uh coaching gig Otherwise, I might have to look for someone else because clearly it's not working out. Now, another coach that I want to mention is another coach who was newly appointed, um, but I think a lot of eyes will be on them to perform because they set a bar really early going into the 22 season and they kind of just faltered. Um, they ended up fading away really badly. And the coach I'm going to be highlighting in my fourth spot is uh, will be Ross Lyon now coaching the uh, St. Kilda Saints. So the thing with uh, Ross Lyon, uh, just to quickly highlight the the season that um, St. Kilda had. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think St. Kilda were like 8-3 and three or 9-3 and three or th they, they were at the end of round 9 because I remember, oh no, sorry, it, I think they were like 7-2. and two. I think seven and two or something like that um, because it was the end of round nine when St. Kilda ha had actually beaten Geelong and they were in the top four ladder at that point. Um, you know, forget about penciling finals. A lot of people were saying, Hey, St. Kilda, maybe a top four side, even though I said that they were a mid table side. You can even go to my Twitter to find that. Um, when I tweeted that after we lost them saying that we shouldn't be losing to mid table sides. And well, Looking at where they finished uh, in 2022, they finished 10th with 11 wins and 11 losses. So as mid-table as you can get. Jokes aside, St. Kilda fans, please don't come at me. <laughs> um, you know, they they was they had a really great start, right? You know, 7-2 or whatever it was. It was like 7-2, 6-3, something like that. They were on fire, right? They looked really good. They looked really strong uh, at the time, you know, they had a pretty creative game plan. They were making it work. And then, you know, like the, in their next like 12 games that they played, they won three or four of them, you know, like that's not good enough. Um, when you were like seven and two, um, 
you know, going into the 10th round 10 and in your next 12 games, you win four of them to finish 11 and 11 for the season. That's pretty piss poor. So going into 2023, obviously St. Kilda uh, thinking that they are still going to be a chance to try and uh, give themselves a crack at a top eight finish, right? Hence, they've tried to make this move to Ross Lyon. So Ross Lyon, obviously, he was a coach that has worked with Fremantle um, and has worked with other clubs uh, to re- pretty decent success. Uh, you know, we're talking like finals football and whatnot. Uh, the only thing with like Ross is that a lot of people are skeptical of his like game plan or game plans, I should say, going into game day, uh, where he's a very slow, like uh, spread the ball Uh, keep control kind of like what Chris Scott was uh, like earlier on in the uh, early stages of his career where he tried to develop this kind of chip the ball hold possession type style slow game play football uh, which can work uh, you know against certain teams but you know when you're when you're trying to do it for you know what feels like 120 minutes of football um it doesn't win you a lot of games. It's good at holding games. You know, if, you, if you're up by like, you know, 30, 40 points, like, you know, wh- why throw the game away? You know, just try and keep control of it. But when that's your game plan from like minute one to like the last minute of the game, it doesn't really work. So there is a bit of uh, skepticism, if that's the word, um, around Ross. Uh, but look, if he comes in with a new game plan with fresh ideas, um, there is every bit of chance that St. Kilda can try and make a push for top eight, but I think this is that type of year where if Ross Lyon comes into the team and St. Kilda finish like bottom four, something like that, uh, Ross is gone. He is, he's lost his job. Um, you know, when, when you look at like how they finished last year, just looking at this ladder here that I've got, uh, to the right side of my screen. Uh, finishing 10th at 11-11. If they were to drop any further than that, that would be considered a bit of a fail. May not necessarily make the finals per se, but are expected to at least be competitive. And if they were to drop like, you know, 14, 15th on the ladder, uh, some questions would have to be asked and we'd probably might see um, the main man, Ross Lyon, straight out the doors. And the last coach that I want to talk about. Now, this one might be a bit of a shock to some of you. As for others, it might be... Uh, something that's kind of expected considering how they've been kind of performing in the last few years, uh, getting ever so close to uh, great success. And that is from the Brisbane Lions, Chris Fagan. Um, I do believe he is a coach that is under the pump in my fifth spot. So the thing with Fagan is he's been coaching the club since 2016. Uh, or 2017, I guess I should technically say, because that's when he started the season with the team. And they've been very successful with him. Um, You know, just looking at some of the stats here, you know, since he's been the coach of the Brisbane Lions, they've had a 54% win rate. He's been an assistant at Hawthorne, um, you know, during those years where Hawthorne were a really strong club. Chris Fagan, like he has shown that he knows how to coach a winning team and he has shown that he can get this team to success year in, year out. But I think Brisbane is at that point where they've had quite a few years now where they've put themselves in great spots to try and win a flag and it comes to finals and they kind of just, they just choke it. You know, people were kind of clowning on Geelong for being the choke artists of the finals, which admittedly up until last year, we basically were. You know, we, we try to get to the big ones and we just either get smashed around or we just don't show up or we get sick, apparently, stuff like that. Um, you know, but you look at Brisbane and their finals record is atrocious. Obviously, they, they did have a pretty decent run in 22 where they did manage to get through the first week against uh, Richmond, and then they got through the next week beating Melbourne to actually make it into a prelim against Geelong. Now, admittedly, Geelong were a very strong team last year, as we would know. Uh, Geelong were amazing, and it just felt like we finally hit that sixth gear that we were desperately looking to try and hit at the right time, you know, come into finals, come into, 
you know, the prelim and the granny. Brisbane did lose to a very good outfit uh, in ours truly. But, you know, going into this 23 season, uh, it's definitely that year where I feel like a lot of the Brisbane faithful, a lot of the uh, staff at the football club in Brisbane, a lot of the coaching staff and the players do thoroughly believe that they need to be at least having a crack at the flag, if not winning the flag. And, you know, like, look, I think if Brisbane were to finish, you know, in the bottom half of the eight again, going into next year, or sorry, going into this year, um, you know, questions would have to be raised about uh, Fagan if he's the man for the job, but I don't think he'd be losing his job. But if Brisbane were to miss out on finals entirely somehow, um, that's where the chopping board would start to come down and probably let Chris Fagan walk because, you know, they've been close for so many years now and they've been really kind of knocking on the door for another flag um, in the last few years, but coming up short every time. Um, if they were to miss out on finals completely, I think Fagan loses the job. And I think if they do make the finals, but they don't really have an impact in it at all, I think questions around the coaching uh, staff have to be asked and probably a meeting would have to be conducted whether Chris Fagan is the man for the job or do they need to change the coaching staff around him? Kind of like what we did at Geelong where we kind of changed the people around Chris Scott to help facilitate a much more successful image for the That club. about wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy uh, these comments, uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you're new, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Obviously, coming up this week uh, is the big clash at the MCG with uh, Geelong and Collingwood uh, at the MCG, as mentioned. Uh, obviously, I will be vlogging that video. I will be there, so make sure you do hit that subscribe button to follow along with the journey. Um, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be uh, great content, hopefully, and hopefully we get a win, obviously, as well. And that'll be a great video to post if we do get the win. If we do get the loss, well, it's going to be a very painful uh, video. Um, regardless, there'll be a lot to talk about um, at the end of the match. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in that vlog, which is coming up by the end of this week. Thanks, guys.